Sputnik was the first satellite launched into space, and it was launched uh, in 1957 by the Soviet Union. Americans were shocked. It led to a national re-examination. We Americans were somewhat embarrassed that um, the Soviet Union seemed to be out in front of us. The response to Sputnik in this country led to the ambitions of placing a man on the moon. But why some say the moon? Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best. And in a way, it was the American counterpoint to Sputnik. We'll not only match you, we'll go you one better. And what's more, we'll do it in a decade. And we did. It gave an impetus to trying to create uh, more interest in math and science and getting more people involved in it. Other measures were taken, mostly designed to increase the supply of teachers, of engineers, and scientists. You had a huge number of, uh, of American kids take up math and science, in part because it was tied to space and they could see these different space launches and they could see astronauts going into space and into orbit. And there was an excitement about all of that and it, it brought it home in a very concrete way. There really began this explosion of technology development in the late 70s and early 80s. All of this was the product of, of kids who were being educated in the late 50s and 1960s. You can get smug, you can think you're your lead is so great that you don't need to worry about it. You may notice that your VCR isn't made in the United States. You may notice that uh, a big company has outsourced a particular type of job. A lot of what we take for granted depends on our ability to be innovative and technologically sophisticated, and we're losing that ability, we're losing that edge. The foundation of everything that we do is math and science. And so if we want to continue to advance ourselves in those areas, then we need young people who are interested and capable of doing those things. What we know in testing kids is at the fourth grade level, we lead science in the world. But sometime in middle school and high school, we begin to fall way behind. Perhaps more of a major course correction is required, maybe in the preparation of public school teachers. Americans are beginning to wake up and to get it. My name is Elizabeth Abernathy, and I'm a science teacher here at Keeling Middle School. I teach a core eighth grade science and a forensic science elective. I think I'm a teacher partly because I'm bossy. I like explaining things, and I used to be a theater major. I teach because I love to learn. I've always been a very curious person through my whole life. I've always wanted to know why. I've always wanted to know how. My hope is to get that to rub off on the students as well, too. Can anybody here tell me the names of the nine planets or the planets in our solar system? Neptune. Is there another? Pluto. Pluto. Are you sure? Well, you know what? Pluto's not a planet anymore. Who knows what one of these things are? Come here. Goggles. These are goggles. Where do I wear these? These protect your eyes. They protect my eyes. Have you ever been blown up before? No. <laughs> no? OK, well, today is your lucky day, my friend. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can make a fire. Okay? Kids need time, and they need experiences with math and science. And what I mean by that specifically is that they need to see science in action. I became concerned about math and science teaching I looked at the situation and decided I wanted to try to create a program that would attract students to teaching. The citizens of our world, the builders and the caretakers of our world need to know more about science than they ever had to before. It then becomes very critical that we have enough well-trained, successful teachers. You Teach was created to address the shortage of math and science teachers in Texas and in the country. There's been a lot of attention nationally and across Texas in replicating the program. My name is Pedro Merced. I am a mathematics senior here at the University of Texas. Nowhere had I ever heard of a teacher certification program where in the first semester that you're in it, you go out into the classrooms and teach. That right there made me decide, okay, I can do this.
They know right away, do they like the classroom? Do they like working with kids? We figure someone who doesn't like working with kids probably shouldn't become a teacher. Are you all ready? Yeah. 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 All right, let's go. It says Timmy has 180. Mass is the Math and Science Scholars Program, and it's a teacher recruitment and preparation program at Texas A&M. The way that the MASS program works is that we recruit young, bright math and science students in their freshman year. And during their freshman year, we give them experience in schools with great math and science teachers so that they learn what it looks like and if it's a possibility for them. When a light bulb goes off over a student's head, it's amazing. You just want to celebrate and rejoice with them. There are lots of different ways that math comes up in the real world, from cell phone signals to a bat hitting a baseball. The greatest thing a teacher can do for a student is connect the subject matter that they love so much with a student's lives. I tell my young teachers very often that you don't teach a subject matter, you teach children. And if you can connect your subject matter to the young person, then that will make it for them. All of us learn better when we actually discover something for ourselves. We try to teach our university students that way so that they will be able to teach the way they've been taught. Okay, what we're doing, I already explained this to most of the people. You're filling up a cup with water. You're gonna need to have a hypothesis of how many paper clips you think will go in there without spilling a single drop. I think eight. I think six. Fourteen. <laughs> Anything hands-on, being able to actually touch equipment. A lot of kids, they love beakers. They love anything that looks like something a mad scientist would use. When you're actually doing things, you're experiencing the process of science. It changes the way you think about things. You learn how to think critically. There are lots of things that keep kids, especially middle school kids, from going along this path, and then they're gone. So you have to show them how exciting it is, how rewarding it is. A good teacher can really do that. Three, two, one, fireball! It, it's not that passing fifth grade science will get you a job as an engineer. It's really just what they're doing is opening, opening doors for opportunities that they may want to do later. The world's huge, and so you need to be able to communicate. And math basically is the language of the world. Math and science is the language of the world. What did you guys see when you were putting in paper clips? I think because it was a magnet. Just because a student didn't get science or math education in the home doesn't mean that they don't have those abilities. And if I don't pay attention to them now when I have them, I might be throwing away the next Einstein. For every society, the education of our children is the promise of the future. It's incumbent on us to give the best possible education. And it's their entrepreneurship, their creativity, their knowledge of science, their knowledge of engineering that will drive these economies. The number of students who are being educated in science and engineering is growing enormously in India and China. At a time where uh, the number of students who are graduating in those areas in American universities is remaining flat. We don't have a crisis on our hands right now that if we don't do something now to begin to deal with these problems, we will have a serious problem in 10 to 15 years. Getting people to take seriously a problem that's not a crisis is never easy for a democracy. I want to be a pediatrician when I grow up. I want to be a paleontologist. I want to be a teacher. And I want to be a marine biologist. And I want to be a fashion designer. I want to be a zoologist. I want to be a veterinarian. And I want to be a doctor whenever I grow up.